In the previous lecture, we essentially discussed the concept of connecting our capacitors in parallel to one another within an electric circuit. Now we're going to discuss a second type of way in which we can connect our capacitors within an electric circuit. We're going to examine connecting capacitors in series next to one another. So connecting our capacitors in series simply means we're connecting them right next to one another within our electric circuit as shown in the following diagram. So we have a closed electric circuit and we have two capacitors, capacitor 1 and 2, that are placed in series or next to one another as shown. Now notice we don't actually have a battery within our electric circuit and that implies we don't have a voltage difference. So because we don't have a voltage difference that implies electrons will not flow within our electric circuit and because because electrons don't flow, that means no electric charge actually accumulates on our parallel plates. So the charge on these plates will be neutral. So once again, if there is no voltage difference within the circuit, there will be a neutral charge on the parallel plates. Now let's suppose I take this electric circuit and I place a battery into our electric circuit as shown. So now this battery has two different ends which are at different potentials. So this potential given by VB is the lower potential and this potential given by VA is the higher potential. Now if we take VB and subtract VA that will give us our voltage difference that exists across our battery. Now as a result of this voltage difference electrons will begin to flow from the lower potential given by VB to the higher potential of the battery given by VA. And because electrons can jump from this side to this side, they will instead travel in this direction along our electric circuit. So, let's read the following paragraph. These electrons collect on the right hand plate of the second capacitor. So these electrons coming from our lower potential side of the battery will travel this way and will collect on this plate of our second capacitor. So this collection of charge on the right plate repels electrons on the left hand plate of that same capacitor and forces them to travel onto the right hand plate of the first capacitor. So our electrons travel this way and they collect on this plate. How much charge is collected? Well, let's say negative Q quantity of charge is collected. Now that collection of electrons will repel the electrons on this plate and that will force them as a result of electric forces to travel onto the right hand plate of the first capac capacitor as shown. Now how much quantity of charge will be found on the left hand side plate of the second Second capacitor. Well before our charge was neutral and the sum of these two charges should also sum up to being neutral because of the conservation of electric charge. So if on this end we have negative Q on this plate we should have positive Q because positive Q plus negative Q gives us a neutral charge of zero. Now that implies that negative Q quantity of charge will collect on on the right hand plate of capacitor number one. Finally, the electrons on the left hand plate of the first capacitor, this capacitor, are repelled and travel to the higher voltage given by VA of our battery. And so, our electrons will travel along the following pathway from, v, uh, from VB to VA of our battery. Now, let's examine the following statement. 
So we want to find the single equivalent capacitor that will replace these two capacitors and at the same time that will hold the same quantity of electric charge under the same voltage difference as these two capacitors placed in series. So we're looking for the equation that will give us the capacitance of this single capacitor that will replace these two capacitors under the same conditions of charge and voltage. So what do we know about our capacitors which are placed in series? So the total voltage that lies across the battery given by V is equal to the sum of the voltages of our capacitor 1 and capacitor 2. So V total is equal to V1 plus V2. So once again, the total voltage for capacitors placed in series is equal to the sum of the individual voltages of these individual capacitors placed in series or next to one another within an electric circuit. So because the total charge Q is equal to the capacitance multiplied by the voltage, we can rearrange this equation and solve for our voltage. We see the voltage is equal to the ratio ratio Q divided by our C. So we can replace our total voltage with the charge given by Q divided by our capacitance of that single capacitor which is given by EQ, where EQ stands for the equivalent single capacitor. So this is equal to, well, V1 becomes Q divided by C1 and V2 becomes Q divided by C2, where C1 is the capacitance of this capacitor and C2 is the capacitance of this capacitor. Now notice the Q's appear on both of these terms. So we can take that out of our equation and we get this result. And now notice the Q's appear on the left side of the equation and the right side. So we can cancel these Q's out and we get the following equation. So this gives us the capacitance of that single equivalent capacitor that will replace these capacitors that are placed in series with respect to one another.